McDonough here, author of the Loche books, amongst other things. Uh, joining me at Goodwood Festival of Speed 2010. Uh, what are you doing here this weekend, Ed? What are you um, up to? Well, I'd like to say as little as possible and, and getting into other people's cars. I am uh, getting into a few cars, but I'm actually doing the radio commentary for Goodwood Radio, yeah. which I do on a, on a regular basis. Uh, and particularly because there's an Alfa Romeo celebration, um, I've sort of been doing quite a lot of Alfa Romeo coverage. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be in the, the 9083 Porsche that won the Targa Florio with Joe Sifford and Brian Redman. Um, you know, I know it's an overused word, but it's very, it is an iconic car, it's, uh, and it's that kind of golf color blue car, very, very famous car from the Porsche Museum. Lord March is um, driving it, and um, he and I are having a chat last night because it looks like I'm edging him out because he seems to have other commitments, and I All think right. he's slightly annoyed by that. All <laughs> right. <laughs> um, doing what I, I love doing most of all and that's looking around at all the different cars getting a chance to meet some of the drivers occasionally and do interviews for books and uh, and such like soaking up the wonderful atmosphere that is the Goodwood Festival of Speed. I, I just love walking around the paddock getting up close to some of the, the really old cars I suppose. One of the the cars that's here this year that I've never seen before is um, Jim Clark's Indianapolis winning Lotus, which has um, come over from the Indianapolis Museum for, I think it's the first time it's been, been out of there since the, the race itself in, in the 60s. That'll be a, a highlight, I think. But I love the old auto unions and Mercedes, the Silver Arrows of their day. Um, anything like that. It's, it's the old ones and the, the sound of them in particular uh, that I like. The highlight of the Festival of Speed this year, uh, for me as an Alfa Romeo enthusiast, quite naturally, is the fact that we are celebrating the centenary of Alfa Romeo. And uh, as part of that, there's the UK launch of the new Alfa Romeo Giulietta. There's one just over there behind me. Alfa Romeo have been supporters of the Festival of Speed since the start, right back in the early 90s, and, and every year they've brought along a selection of cars from the, their historic museum in Aresi, in Milan. But to celebrate the centenary, they've brought along even more cars than ever this year, and there are some cars that have rarely, if ever, left Italy. So it's an opportunity for enthusiasts to see cars they probably would never have seen before and may never see again. Author of a couple of Veloce books, Johnny Tipler. Um, it's nice to meet you. What's going on at this event this year then of, 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 of interest? There's a couple of things, isn't there? Well, there are a couple of things. I gather the main theme, and <clears throat> we are here on the very first day, so we haven't really seen too much of the action as yet. But the main theme uh, seems to be Alfa Romeo's uh, 60th anniversary? 100th anniversary. 100th anniversary, <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right then. Yeah. <laughs> it's the centenary, isn't it? It's the centenary of, yeah. of Alfa Romeo. And, and uh, having written uh, uh, at least two Alfa Romeo books for Veloce. I was going to say, um, <laughs> I, should know that. I think, am I right in saying that um, the book you, you did write uh, on Alfa Romeo for Veloce was the first Veloce book? It Does was, actually, yeah. It was originally commissioned by uh, Haynes, and uh, Rod Granger was working for Haynes at the time. And uh, somehow it stalled. I don't know if there was a sudden recession or what, but and we we're going back to 1990, uh, roughly, I think. So, so yes, a book that I was, was uh, pleased to have done. Uh, but then it stalled in the, in the uh, publishing process, and um, Rod had set up on his own and uh, so he took the book with him mm. and that was great and we did a, we did a, a, a launch at the uh, National Alpha Day. What other things do you have planned um, for your time here this year? My time here, well, 
it's um, it's not so much uh, seeing the cars, although the, the cars are uh, are fantastic. What they what they get here. Uh, for me, it's a good opportunity to uh, grab interviews with uh, with famous drivers. Mm. So, um, you know, I write for a Porsche magazine, so I'll be <coughs> trying to find famous Porsche drivers to who, interview. Who have you got in mind? Who are you looking um, at? Well, the trouble is that I've done most of them. <laughs> but um, uh, people like, like R- Richard Atwood, who won uh, Le Mans. Uh, now, let's get this right. Porsche's first win at Le Mans was uh, 1970, so that's, uh, am I right, 30 years ago? That's 40 years ago. That's now. 40 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Here at um, this year's event. Well, I'm always hopeful of, of seeing a BRM V16, but there are, there are so few of them in captivity, uh, and they're so rarely allowed out that there's not one here, I'm afraid. Very seldom is. The other, my, my, the other cars which I'm very keen to see, the two Alphas, the Alpha 158 and the 159, they were the 1950 championship winning car and the car that succeeded that which was the 159 in 1951 before they left motor racing completely and that was the end. So those are the three cars I'm really out to see. But I always love to see a Maserati 250F. There's plenty of those to see fortunately and they're always around. Uh, yeah, we're just fortunate enough to see Sterling at a book signing ceremony at Port of Press, one of your rivals. Um, and I needed to clarify with him the positioning of the throttle on the car that he drove in 1954. And he was able to confirm it was a, it, it, normally for the Continental drivers of that era, they had the throttle in the centre, which seems extraordinary. But he couldn't get on with that quite reasonably. So. Al Francis, who was building the car up at the Maserati factory, uh, had it converted to a conventional right-hand place. Because uh, otherwise he was in danger of pressing the wrong throttle. So he had it specially adapted to his liking. So we saw Sterling. Other th- celebrities? Well, of course, they're few and far between in my era. They're sort of a dying breed. But, you know, I'm always glad to see Formula One people you know, the present era, if you can get close to them. But, you know, just an autographing session isn't the opportunity to have ask questions, which is really what I want to do. What are you you doing here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed 2010 then? Well, I've always seemed to be doing lots of things at the Festival of Speed, but today we're exhibiting this rather nice 1961 behind us. And I'm also crewing for a friend who's got a Lotus 12, 1958, the first Lotus car to win Grand Prix points. So it's a, a second diversion today as well, which is great fun. When I left school, I was lucky enough to be sent to America by my dad in the mid-60s, and um, I forgot all about my favourite Aston Martins, Mortons and Triumphs, and fell in love with Corvettes and Harley Davidsons. And it's uh, something I've never regretted, and I love everything about the Corvette, particularly the extraordinary durability and reliability.